Today, Kyiv reported a Kimzal hypersonic missile barrage against the capital that included a strike on a maternity hospital. The transcript attributes 14 civilian deaths to the maternity hospital strike. This figure is reported here as an allegation pending independent confirmation. The Ukrainian response, as presented here, was not immediate kinetic retaliation. Instead, Kyiv allegedly chose to strike at what its intelligence assessed as the logistic headwaters of the Russian campaign, the Koltsoy fuel pipeline. Codenamed Operation Serpent's Head, the plan used inexpensive FPV drones to disable the Koltsoy pipeline at a moment of maximal strategic effect. At 2.01 a.m., 12 FPV drones, organized into decoy and attack elements, launched from a mobile command platform. The drones were split into two formations and employed a deliberate deception. Eight units ascended to a higher altitude to act as decoys, broadcasting electronic signatures designed to mimic larger Iranian-made Shahed-style loitering munitions. Four were assigned to a low-flight attack role, using terrain masking and electronic spoofing to fly beneath and inside the radar envelope. The plan combined inexpensive airframes with tailored electronic warfare and human-in-the-loop control to exploit assumptions built into Russian layered defenses. Tactically, the decoys had two simultaneous tasks. First, to generate a visible high-altitude threat that would draw attention upward and trigger the layered defenses. Second, to saturate automated prioritization logic and human operators with a flood of plausible threats. The transcript emphasizes that the success of the mission rested on precise timing, specifically the pipeline being at peak pressure, an amount the transcript describes as approximately 7 million tons of pressurized fuel. Minutes later, a Pantsir S-1 short-range air defense system engaged. Its twin 30mm cannons began firing, shredding two of the eight decoys. The downed decoy's burning debris created smoke that degraded the next drone's visual feed, contaminating the low-altitude approach corridor. In a doctrinal sense, this is an unintended consequence of kinetic interception. A successful shootdown can create environmental effects that hinder follow-on strikes. In this case, the debris-induced smoke degraded the optical and infrared feed of the follow-on operator and pushed a low-flying drone momentarily above the horizon line, exposing it to an additional dedicated low-altitude sensor. A dedicated low-altitude sensor, Podlet K1, acquired the drone and used broad-spectrum jamming to sever its RF link. This loss illustrates a predictable weakness in remotely piloted operations. Radio frequency, RF, dependence. Once RF links were degraded, two drones were effectively neutralized without kinetic interception. The Panzer, freed from distraction, acquired a lock on a third attack drone and eliminated it with cannon and missile. That left a single drone to complete the mission. What follows is a study in redundancy and ingenuity. The final drone reportedly deployed a microfilament fiber optic tether, a physical cable thinner than a human hair, to provide a hardwired, unjammable data link to the operator. This tactic converted the FPV platform from an RF-dependent asset into a line-of-sight fiber-coupled tool immune to RF suppression. The transcript cites technical detail, a high bandwidth fiber link, approximately 1 gbit s as reported, sufficient for low latency FPV control, underscores how a low cost platform can be adapted to maintain high fidelity control under heavy electronic attack. With the tethered feed restored, the drone navigated into the target clearing. The pipeline node described in the transcript is a nexus of three large steel conduits operating under extreme pressure, presented as approximately 1,000 psi and approximately 7 million tons of fuel claim across the system. The operator's target was specifically the central pressure valve, a control point where a well-placed detonation could cascade into systemic failure. The drone's final attack profile was a high-speed, low-mass impact at roughly 140 miles per hour carrying a small shaped charge designed to penetrate anti-drone mesh, the pipe's outer casing, and to deliver a brief high energy impulse into the pressurized conduit. The ensuing mechanical and thermodynamic sequence is presented in detail. The small one pound charge pierced the pipe and detonated with a 0.8 second delay. 
a small shaped charge breached a pressurized section, triggering a hydraulic shock that caused catastrophic structural failure and a large crater. The transcript claims 12 Russian reservists and nearby bunker crews were killed in the blast and that the explosion severed power and data lines, complicating diagnostics and emergency response. Strategically, the attack is framed as catastrophic, not just locally, but systemically. The pipeline's destruction is described as causing an immediate and cascading fuel deficit. Transneft control centers allegedly registered the abrupt loss of flow and pressure. The transcript attributes cancelled air sorties and halted armoured manoeuvres to this fuel shock. It describes a 72-hour operational paralysis as Russian logistics attempted to reroute fuel and assess infrastructure damage. In the operational logic presented, a relatively tiny investment, a dozen tilled dollar 400 FPV drones, $4,800 total, plus low-cost deception aids, yielded effects estimated to cost many millions by halting frontline mobility and temporarily grounding aircraft. From an analytic perspective, the operation combined multiple domains to create asymmetry. There was intelligence, target pressure profiles, and timing that enabled surgical employment. There was electronic warfare and spoofing to manipulate sensor prioritization and deceive human operators. There were low-cost kinetic effects provided by expendable FPV platforms. Finally, there was a human-in-the-loop command architecture that could adapt in real time. When RF links failed, the operator switched to fiber and completed the terminal phase. Together, these elements created a multi-layered kill chain that exploited predictable behavior in complex sensor networks. The transcript also highlights trade-offs and risks. The decoy shootdowns produced collateral effects that nearly compromised the attack drones, demonstrating how kinetic interception layers can both help and hinder defense. The podlet's jamming proved effective against RF-reliant platforms, but could not mitigate a physical fiber link. The operation also relied on luck and timing, a single elevated plume of smoke, a single specialized gap filler radar, or an earlier detection could have led to total mission failure. That the attackers recognized and planned for some contingencies, fiber tethering, GPS spoofing, mobile command posture with escape plans, speaks to mission level resilience. Officials reportedly observed short-term price and supply disruptions within 24 hours, though independent verification is required. These impacts are framed as reverberations of an attack that targeted logistic arteries rather than battlefield formations. If accurate, they underscore how a relatively small strike on infrastructure can produce outsized effects operationally and politically by disrupting supply chains that support platforms rather than platforms themselves. The final operational phase included a scorched earth security practice, the mobile command's self-destruction using thermite, and a rapid exfiltration in anonymous civilian vehicles designed to remove forensic links and ensure personnel safety. After action imagery appears to corroborate the event, though independent sources should be consulted for confirmation. The narrative concludes by asserting that the pipeline's loss created opportunities exploited by Kyiv. Counterattacks across five fronts during a 72-hour window of Russian logistic confusion. Throughout, the account uses the language of deliberate denial. The goal was to sever the fuel lifeline, a strategic aim, rather than matching the Kremlin's missile strikes pound for pound. That logic rests on a principle familiar to modern conflict. Targeting the logistics tail can impose costs on high-value systems through low-cost means. The operation as described is an applied example of that principle. Cheaply purchased FPV drones, electronic deception, and precise human control applied to an economic choke point produced effects disproportionate to the monetary outlay. Key tactical and casualty claims require independent verification before being accepted as fact. Independent verification, attribution, and corroboration are standard requirements for firm analysis. The transcript's tactical sequence is plausible as a composite of known methods, FPV kamikaze attacks, electronic spoofing, fiber tethers, and gap filler radars. But each specific technical datum should be treated as alleged until corroborated by open source imagery, signals intelligence, or official confirmation. As the narrative closes, the operational lesson is clear. Layered defenses can be overwhelmed or manipulated if an attacker combines deception, timing, and redundancy. 
small, inexpensive systems can generate strategic results when they are integrated into a wider intelligence-driven plan. The central question now is operational and political. Can a single surgical disruption of logistical arteries be scaled or replicated without escalating the conflict further? And will defenses adapt to these low-cost vectors faster than attackers can innovate? Will this approach become a template for future strikes on logistic choke points? Or will countermeasures and hardened protocols blunt its effectiveness before it can be widely adopted? If you found this analysis informative, consider subscribing for more verified, documentary-style breakdowns of modern warfare and emerging defense technologies. Each episode examines real-world tactics, intelligence methods, and battlefield innovation shaping today's conflicts. From drone warfare to cyber deception, we connect technical details to strategic impact, clearly, calmly, and factually. Your support helps bring accurate, evidence-based reporting to a wider audience. Subscribe, share, and stay with us as we continue to uncover how technology and strategy are rewriting the rules of modern conflict, one operation at a time.